In this video, I'm gonna be talking about market maker buy and market maker sell models. This is what you can expect to see. We're gonna be talking about engineered liquidity, smart money reversals, SMT divergence, standard deviation, understanding fractal price, and then of course, how to actually trade this model. This video could be charged for hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in some mentorship. I'm going to give this to you absolutely free because I care about sharing this knowledge, sharing my experiences and helping others through ICT concepts and through these types of videos. So before we get into it, I just hope you guys enjoy the video. If you do, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and uh, it would mean a lot to me. So let's jump right in. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about and what I want you guys to understand in this video is the three reasons why markets move. Every single time that I'm trading, I have these three things in mind. It needs to be burned into your brain and every single trade that you take or idea or bias that you have needs to have one of these three things as a factor in it. Number one, markets move to hunt liquidity, buy side and sell side. Number two, Markets move to rebalance to inefficiencies, which are fair value gaps. And number three, rebalancing to equilibrium. So these are the three things of reasons why markets move. We are constantly doing this. Every second of every day that market is open, we are doing one of these three things, either hunting liquidity, rebalancing to an inefficiency, or rebalancing the equilibrium. Okay, so these are the first things that I want to talk about because this is going to be the foundation of why we think the market goes to where it's going to go. And it gives us a good understanding of why the market model actually works. So what we're looking at here is a market maker buy model. You can see on the left here, this is what we would call the original consolidation. The original consolidation ends up starting here before we slowly start to sell off, which this becomes, again, sell side of the curve where liquidity starts to be engineered. We start to slowly sell off before putting in a swing high, before making one more low low, swing high, and finally coming into taking out a form of sell side here and bouncing into a higher time frame PD array. So that is very important. We're coming down to sweep sell side. We're coming down to bounce off the higher time frame PD array. Now, what we're looking for here is what we call a smart money reversal. This is where institutions are now loading up their positions. We They know that longs have now been stopped out. Again, sell side has been taken. Liquidity has now been purged. And this is where we're looking for a smart money reversal, which is an SMT. So when we come down into a higher time frame for a value gap after sell side or buy side of the curve has finished, we've taken sell side, we're bouncing off of a bigger time frame imbalance. This is where we are looking for a smart money reversal, which is an SMT at the lows, and finally getting displacement back inside of the range, right? This is where we look for displacement back up, a market structure shift, and some sort of pullback into a fair value gap. Now, at this point in time, I am looking for a fair value gap. If there is not a fair value gap, it is automatically lower probability. And the reason for that is I am looking for displacement. Now, displacement equals a fair value gap. A fair value gap is created when market is displacing. Displacement is what I consider is a, I want to see a volatile move, a quick move back into the range where we get displacement above this swing high. I don't want to see it just a little poke above. I want to see a nice move and follow through above this previous high. Now, going back to the sell side of the curve here, why is it that we are actually doing this? Number one, what are going back to the three reasons we talk about? Why are we even selling off in the first place? Number one, to hunt liquidity. We're reselling down to go back to hunt some form of sell side liquidity. We're also rebalancing to an inefficiency, which is the bigger time frame, higher time frame PD array, or, and potentially we could be also rebalancing to a bigger time frame equilibrium, which could be, again, if I was going to draw out a range, could be something like this from a recent low that we had down here, which now we are rebalancing to equilibrium of that range before continuing higher. Now, once we have the smart funny reversal, what is engineering liquidity? Well, on our way down, you notice that we put in these swing highs. This is engineered liquidity. Notice how most of the time when we are having a move lower, there are times when we will have a high or some form of high being taken before going lower. But a lot of the times we will leave a lot of swing highs. We can see that we left one here. This now becomes a form of buy side. Another one here. The whole process on our way to the downside is we are constantly engineering buy side liquidity. So on our way up, all of that buy side liquidity gets ran through. Again, this is known as a low resistance liquidity run. When we have all of these highs inside of the range, 
this becomes low resistance liquidity, meaning we should not come up to this high and immediately sell back off. We should not come up here, sell off until the external draw or the external buy side level is then taken, right? And notice previously from the original consolidation, we actually ended up creating equal highs here. Now, a lot of the time you will not get super clean equal highs like in this example. This is just an example. But most of the time, we will have an original consolidation, which will act as that buy side level that we would want to see. And sometimes there's not an original consolidation. It's just the buy side level from the initial move higher. Now, this is the, uh, the basic understanding of what we would want to look for. So now let's go into a little particular things. Again, if you don't understand what an SMT is, we'll go over that real quick as well. So an SMT is a divergence between indices. When we're looking for a smart money reversal and recognizing when the start of buy side of the curve, when the start of sell side of the curve, one of the biggest and best understandings of when that is, is if we get some form of SMT. Now, in this example, you can see ES is ending up making a lower low, while NQ makes a higher low and YM also makes a higher low, right? So we can talk about the E-mini, the NASDAQ, and the Dow. When ES ends up selling off, creating a lower low, this it creates an SMT divergence, right? The divergence between indices because ES is making a lower low while NQ and YM make a higher low. This is a bullish divergence. A bearish divergence would be the opposite of this, which would be at the highs. ES or NQ or YM, it doesn't matter which one. One of the indices is creating a higher high while the others are creating a lower high. This is what we want to see when we are looking for some form of of divergence in the market. So let's jump into some examples of a model. So the first example we're actually going to look at is on a smaller time frame. And the reason you might ask why, Justin, are you doing this is because this model is everything in the market. This is the market. Everything that you see in this video, I my goal is for you to understand not only the model, but the fractal aspect of this model. So number one, going into the first example here, this was actually today. Um, so just an example, I'm not going back in price. This was literally today that this happened and we'll go over this. And I actually live streamed this, this trade, um, and told everybody that this would, this is your low risk buy here. Um, but what are we looking for here? Why, what can we understand just by looking at this chart? Number one, this is on a one minute time frame. When people like to think of a market maker buy sell model, most of the time they're thinking bigger time frame, 15 minute, four hour, one hour, whatever it is. This is a one minute time frame, And I wanted to start here because we're going to move our way up and build to understand fractal the fractal aspect of the market. So you can see we end up having the initial move higher. We end up creating that buy side. Notice on our way down, once we're, again, wire market's moving, once we're selling off to rebalance to the inefficiency, once we sell off to rebalance back to equilibrium of the initial range, right? We end up generating and engineering buy side liquidity from this initial high here, from this initial high here, we end up creating an engineering buy side liquidity. Now, zooming in, or actually, we'll, we'll stick for here for now. Notice we end up having that final smart money reversal that we're looking for. Again, if I am looking to understand which is buy side and sell side of the curve, which we can now he understand from here, once we've now seen it fully. But when I'm actually in the moment and I'm looking for this, what am I looking for to understand what is buy side of the curve? What is sell side of the curve? What is the best thing that I want to see happen? Number one, like we talked about earlier, an SMT divergence. I want to see one lash, last manipulation move lower before having displacement back up inside the range and then look looking for some sort of fair value gap. So number one, reasons for the market's moving. We are distributing back to the inefficiency. We're distributing back to equilibrium. And now we're generating sell side or buy side liquidity. We have the manipulation at the lows. Again, smart money reversal, SMT. Smart money starts to load up. We end up getting displacement up. Now, the next imbalance is your potential long opportunity. This is where you're looking to enter long, targeting that buy side. Again, expecting all of this to become low resistance liquidity run. If I zoom in, you can see the nice displacement we end up creating. From the lows, smart money starts to load their positions. You get the nice one minute for value gap before, again, rebalancing to the inefficiency, which is this is where would you where you would enter your position before having that move up, having one last move down, rebalancing to the inefficiency before having that last move to go take out that buy side level, right? So again, this is a 15 second time frame, and I'm on a, also a one minute time frame. The model that you will be looking for will appear on every single time frame that you look for. If you can understand the fractability of it. Now, 
The goal with this video as well is the highest probable understanding and the highest probable trades that you will take with using these models is when you have a good understanding of the draw on liquidity, not just understanding of what the internal draw, but the external draw. Knowing at this specific model, right, just looking at if we were to go back at this point in time, the draw on liquidity for me is buy side, right? But that's it. I don't know anything other than this because I'm on a 15 second, I'm on a one minute, and not you might say, Justin, why is it important for me to understand, you know, what where the bigger time frame market wants to go? Because the highest probability setups you will get is when the external bias can align with the internal bias. The reason why this trade ends up working out so well is because markets have been very bullish recently. The external draw is still higher. There is reason for us to go higher, right? Same thing if I'm looking for a sell model. If I'm looking for a sell model, the highest probability for me to trade intraday, 15 minute, what at one hour, whatever it is, is if the external draw is also lower, okay? That's the first thing I want to talk about. This is the first example. Next example, let's go into. This is going, again, zooming out a little bit more, and this is a specific example that gives us a little bit more understanding of what I mean by fractal. Now, looking at this, just this alone is what I, is what I want you to pay attention to for now. This, you can see, is sell side of the curve. We have buy side of the curve. You can see the engineered highs working our way up here, and this is the buy side level. You might be saying, Justin, why is this the buy side level? Why is this not the buy side level? And why this is marked as buy side for the internal buy side is because if I zoom out to the one hour, you can see that this is a nestled liquidity in a fair value gap. You can see the high here is this fair value gap. And again, if we go back to the three reasons of why markets move, what is the reasoning? Our goal when trading a model should be the why. Why is why should this work? Why should I even put money on the line for this to work? Three reasons. Markets move to hunt liquidity. Markets move to rebalance to an inefficiency. This is the first thing. When we're looking at this, this is liquidity because we automatically expect price to number one, at least rebalance to this inefficiency. And the buy side level here is resting on a smaller time frame. Fair value gaps are liquidity on a smaller time frame. Liquidity is always resting and most of the time resting in some sort of bigger time frame imbalance if you zoom in. So going back to the five minute, we get to understand this bigger tire, the smaller, you know, market maker model on a five minute. Now, what I want to zoom out before we get into this is notice what we're looking at here. When I zoom out, you can see when I start to zoom out, we get a good picture of what we're looking at here. Now, I could have traded this multiple different ways and many different traders would have looked at this differently and, I, and it would have completely traded it a different way. Now, let's just talk about this model for, for the second. Sell side has been taken, rejecting off of a bigger time frame imbalance, displacement to the upside. Notice we're running this fair value gap. What do I expect this to become? An inverse fair value gap. We come back to the inverse fair value gap. Again, where are we also coming back to? Equilibrium of the range. Come back, tap equilibrium, tap the order block before having a move up higher. Now, this is a market maker buy and sell model in, on its own. What is also a market maker buy and sell model? If I zoom in here and I'll show you, I actually, I took this trade and, and right after I explained this, I'll show you the recording. But my first entry at this point in time was right here on this order block. But I ended up adding to this position and I'll show you why. Zooming into a one minute, what does this look like to you? W what does this look like? Could it be? Are we engineering buy side liquidity on our way down before having a manipulation move at the low displacement to the upside a breaker a fair value gap the market is fractal everything that you look at you can constantly zoom out constantly zoom in zoom in models inside of models this is another market maker sell and market maker buy model. Again, we come back down, redistributing back to the bigger time frame imbalance, back to the bigger time frame PD array, back to equilibrium of the previous range. Now, why is this such a higher probability entry? Because it aligns with the bigger time frame model. It is a model inside of a model. So I take my initial entry on the bigger time frame model, which is right here on the order block, I zoom in and then recognize the intraday smaller time frame model inside of the already existing model. So this becomes my first entry. 
Where do you think I add on this? Once I see the smart money reversal here, we hold up SMT displacement above that high. We now have a breaker. This is where I take my second entry. But where am I targeting with this trade? Where do my target? Whatever the model is telling me I should target, which is the internal draw. Engineered buy side liquidity on our way down. This becomes the draw on liquidity here, which also, again, this becomes internal buy side, but this becomes the engineered liquidity from this initial buy model, right? So the more that you start to look at the market in this kind of aspect, the more precise you will become. Precision comes from understanding fractability in the market. When you see people on Twitter, when you see people on YouTube having good trades and you're like, how, like, how can you be this precise? This is the reasoning why. It is fractal systems. When you are looking at a model, you can always zoom in more to find the, another model inside of that model and then find that model inside of that model and have the most precise entries you could possibly have. So look at this for a second. Screenshot it if you want. Now, what I also want to go over too is what makes this so good? What makes this trade so good? What makes this chart so good? Is because every time frame that I look at a model, it is in favor of the exact same bias. When I zoom in here, it's bullish. When I zoom out, this model's bullish. When I zoom out even more, this model's bullish. Why is this model bullish? We just ended up sweeping sell side. We're bouncing off the bigger time frame of balance. And we have generated buy side above. We have buy side liquidity here. We have generated buy side liquidity here. This entire move up, all of these intermediate term highs becomes generated buy side liquidity for another bigger time frame model for us to then break through this imbalance after taking sell side. Again, why did we even have this move in the first place? To rebalance to the bigger time frame for value gap, to rebalance the equilibrium of the range. Why do you think that is? This is why markets move. Let's go to the next the next example here. Oh, here. This is the recording, right? So again, I took my initial entry on the order block. Took my second entry on the breaker. Noticing, again, recognizing the internal model as well. Scaled out in the fair value gap. Scaled out on the initial high as well. Looking for a break above. And then, of course, risk management. Most important thing, my rest of my contracts got stopped at uh, in profit from my, from my, um, my trailing stop. Let's look at another example. Now, again, changing timeframes completely. Four hour now. We're going to a four hour fair value gap here, right? So when I'm looking at a model, I'm looking to understand a bias, right? Especially as an intraday trader and somebody who trades intraday, I am not going to trade this four hour. I'm not going to be like, oh my God, this is a market maker buy model. Let me buy longs in this four hour fair value gap and put it down here. I could do that if I wanted to. It's just not how I trade. I don't like swinging positions. I like trading intraday. What I will use is I will use the four hour or the bigger time frame model to give me my intraday bias to then zoom in and find the exact same model, right? Number one, what, what makes this a buy model? We have engineered buy side above on our way back down. What am I looking for price to rebalance to? The bigger time frame for value gap. We have a bigger time frame for value gap down here. We have generated sell side below. Notice all of these stacked lows here. Generated sell side before we finally end up selling through, taking out all of these lows to then go to the external low here. Again, all of this generated sell side becomes low resistance liquidity run. We take all of it at the same time with this move down here. Once this external sell side level is now taken, what am I looking to see? What am I watching to see happen? I'm watching to see a smart money reversal. What's the first thing I'm looking for? Possible SMT and then displacement back inside of the range. Now, how are there multiple ways that I can trade this? Number one, it depends where we are in the chart. If I am looking at this time frame and I go back to the very beginning of when this entire thing started, this becomes soup on a bigger time frame, right? We have SMT, we have liquidity taken, we have bigger time frame balance being respected. Once we get displacement off of this fair value gap, I can immediately go down to a smaller time frame to trade this. What becomes my draw on liquidity now? If price is all fractal, what becomes my draw on liquidity? Whatever the recent high is, now that we have sell side swept, SMT at the lows, this now becomes my break of structure to the upside. This one hour fair value gap has now been ran through. Drawn liquidity gets taken, and this becomes now our displacement to the upside. So now this buy side level 
is an internal buy side level. But what does this also become? This becomes my market structure shift on a bigger time frame because this is the first swing high that is now being displaced through after sell side has been taken, right? Notice on the way down here as well, what are we doing? What are we, what are we doing on our way back down here? We're engineering buy side liquidity. All of these intermediate term highs that have yet to be taken on our way back down to sell side, right? So now we continue price. Zooming back out to the four hour, we end up coming back down. Sorry, let me clean this up a little bit here. We end up coming back down to this imbalance, right? Once we bounce off of this, off the inverse for value gap, I'm looking for displacement. Again, recognizing the bigger time frame model. Once this ends up getting bought up, this is when I can, again, zoom into a smaller time frame. Look for a possible setup here. If there is not a possible setup, then I am looking to see the next opportunity. So if my bias is bullish here, I have an, a recognition of the bigger time frame model, right? Recognition of the bigger time frame model. Let me take out, just try to clean it up a little bit here. SMT at the lows, market structure shift, pulled back to, where do you think? Discount. Also, where do you think we're pulling back to? The bigger time frame inefficiency, right? I'm hoping you guys are starting to catch along here. Why, why market's moving here, right? We get displacement back up out of this. What am I expecting to see? It draws higher. I'm expecting all of these imbalances to get ran through to the left of us because, again, it's not in favor of the draw. So if I am looking at this chart right now, and if I'm going into the day, what becomes my draw on liquidity? This recent high becomes my draw on liquidity. This now becomes my buy side. So what, how could I trade this? I zoom in. What am I looking for now? So I zoom in. I have my idea of what the draw on liquidity is, understanding the bigger time frame buy model. Now what am I looking for? Another fair value gap. We now have another one hour fair value gap here. That's where I was looking to be possibly take an entry. We never end up coming back to it though. But this is where I would looking to be to find that model. What would I be looking for? Market to come in, SMT at the low, displacement, trade the internal buy model here, targeting the external draw. Okay. But we never end up coming back to it. We just end up going straight down, straight up. I don't touch it here. Okay. The bigger time frame model is still playing out. At this point in time, we understand, we recognize that this is most likely going to be the buy model. We end up coming back down again, where to? Equilibrium of the previous range, where to? Back to the inefficiency. This is when I zoom back into price. What does this now become? Engineered, buy side liquidity. This now becomes a internal sell and buy model. This becomes our buy side. What are we leaving behind? Engineered buy side, all of these inter internal highs. When I zoom in, this now becomes sell side of the curve and buy side of the curve. Why? The bigger time frame draw is higher. We've rebalanced to the inefficiency. We're getting displacement back to the upside. You can zoom in even more, look for possible entry. We can have a breaker here. We have a fair value gap. What do you think price is going to do here? Run right to buy side. Unicorn entry, fair value gap, breaker. Buy side of the curve. A model inside of a model. When you have an understanding of the bigger time frame draw on liquidity, when you can recognize the bigger time frame model, it gives you an opportunity to zoom in and look for the same exact thing with more conviction. There is a reason for it. When I get to zoom down at this lower time frame and I'm looking to take an entry in this breaker, we've now done everything we needed to do. Come down, rebalance to the inefficiency, displacement up, right? Market structure shift to the upside. And I'm looking for buy side. The bigger time frame already is going here. We know the bigger time frame. We have conviction. We're already going to this high. What is going to give me the timing for us to do that? The internal model. The internal model. All of this, again, everything you look at. Everything you look at. If I zoom in, if I zoom in even more, this becomes its own model. All of this engineered buy side before having a move up towards the external draw. Before having another move up towards the external draw. Right? So let's continue in price. What, what happens next year? We're continuing this buy model, respecting bullish imbalances, disrespecting SIBIs. We have another bullish imbalance we end up coming to here. 
What's another way I can trade this, Justin? Well, I have a good understanding of what the bigger time frame draw is. Bigger time frame draw is still up here. We're trying to finish buy side of the curve. We have all of this engineered buy side liquidity. This becomes low resistance liquidity run. I'm looking for this imbalance to hold bullish. How am I looking to possibly trade this? Let me zoom in here. Let me see if we can possibly have a model that we would be looking for. What am I looking for to take a trade here? I am in a bigger time frame imbalance. The draw on liquidity is higher. We are in a bigger time frame market maker buy model. What am I looking for to take a trade intraday though? The exact same thing. I'm looking for manipulation. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Boom. We engineer all of these. Again, if I was to zoom in even more, this would be your buy side of the curve. This would be your sell side of the curve. Another way you could possibly trade this. You know we need a manipulation move to go back higher. So when I zoom in here, what does this now become? Its own model. Rejection of a bigger time frame imbalance. This now becomes a market maker sell model. Zooming in to the one minute or the five minute. Sorry, let me take away this red. It's kind of distracting. Rejection of the bigger time frame imbalance. Buy side swept. Displacement back inside the range. Pull back to a fair value gap. Sell model all the way back down to what? All of this engineered sell side liquidity. All of these lows that are left below, which become what? Low resistance liquidity run. Before having finally the manipulation move lower, before having the buy side of the curve higher, before having the buy side of the move higher on the bigger time frame buy model. Models inside of models inside of models. This is the market. If once you start to think and you start to see the market in this way, you will understand where market wants to go, why market wants to go there, right? Why are markets moving? Hunt liquidity, rebounds to inefficiencies, rebounds to equilibrium. Everything that you see, everything that you trade needs to be focused on that. Now, we've now had our manipulation move. Zooming back out, what am I looking for here? Let me, let me draw back in this imbalance. What am I looking for now, right? Displacement up. Waiting, 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 waiting. Boom. We now get what we want. We have our manipulation move at the low. We get displacement up. What am I now looking for? A pullback to a fair value gap. Pulls back to the fair value gap as well as the order block. Right here. Take a look at this. Why? 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 Why, does the, why would this work? Think about it. What are the things that we've been talking about this entire video? Number one, why are markets moving? Hunt liquidity, rebalance to inefficiencies, rebalance to equilibrium. What have we been doing here? Number one, bigger time frame. We've rebalanced to the inefficiency. Number two, we've rebalanced the equilibrium of this entire previous range that we've had. Number three, we've now had a market maker reversal, right? We had a smart money reversal. SMT generated sell side liquidity. We had a fake move higher before selling back off, rejecting the internal fair value gap, right? Why are we moving higher? Rebalancing to the inefficiency before having the move back, back lower when we have a market maker sell model here. Displacement to the upside after having a manipulation move here. I'm actually not sure if there was a SMT here. There might have been. Was there? Where, where was uh, this? We'll see if there was on YM or ES. I'm actually not sure. I should have probably checked before. Not on YM, maybe on ES. Oh, oh, oh. We had no SMT there. So we have this last manipulation move lower. Sell side gets taken. Again, notice the lack of displacement. The lack of displacement below here. No follow through. Immediately displacement back to the upside. Pull back to where? Equilibrium of the range. Back to the fair value gap. To then finally get bought up. And continue the internal buy side of the curve. Which in, in turn is the move that we were already expecting 
on the bigger time frame. Why? Because we're in a bigger time frame market maker buy model. The whole point of what I want you guys to get out of this video is understanding fractal markets. When I look at a model, when I am looking at anything in the market, the first thing that I'm focusing on is, does it align with the three reasons my markets move? Number two, does it align with the bigger time frame model? If the bigger time frame model is not recognizable, it is automatically lower market conditions and I lower my size. If the bigger time frame model is unrecognizable, it is unfavorable market conditions and I lower my size. That is key. Because if I don't have confidence in where the external draw is, it lowers the quality of my setups on an internal time frame because it gives me, there's, there's less reason for the market to go there, right? When the reason why these internal models work, the reason why this works is because we already know the market is going higher on a bigger time frame. This is a model that's been playing out and it's already exactly what we would look for. A pullback to a bigger time frame for value gap, wait for manipulation, wait for distribution. This is exactly what we're looking for when we are looking to see some form of a buy model. Recognize the bigger model. So now going into another example here. Now this is not an example, but I wanna show you guys what Again, the exact same thing, but a market maker sell model, right? Exactly what we would be looking for for a market maker sell model. The exact same thing. We have original consolidation, move higher, again, creating these swing lows before finally taking out some form of buy side liquidity or rejecting off of a higher time frame PDRA. This is when we are looking for a smart money reversal. We are looking for an SMT. SMT here at the highs, we get displacement back inside the range, pull back to a fair value gap before continuing lower. Notice I have a drawing here. This is how I would trade this model. Again, it depends on the time frame. If I am looking at a four hour or a one hour or a 15 minute or a five minute, whatever it is, the way that I want to get a precise entry is by trading the internal model inside of an already existing model. So I am looking for pull back to a bigger time frame inefficiency, pull back to equilibrium of whatever the, the previous leg move was on a bigger time frame some form of internal buy side swept, displacement to the downside, and then take whatever the internal draw or whatever the internal model is. Fair value gap. This is buy side, sell side of the curve, targeting internal sell side, leaving my runner, right? Everything that you look at is going to be fractal. Every single square in this has an internal model. Every square in here is this on a smaller time frame. This whole thing you're looking at is basically this, 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 everything if you can recognize it. And sometimes it's not as clean as this might be, but it's there. So last thing, forgot to go over this. The last thing that you could implement, which is not as important as just understanding the model, but recognizing standard deviation. Standard deviation is something I use a lot and it makes me recognize the projections or the buy side that I should most likely be targeting. Now, when I'm looking for manipulation, I am looking for a area that I can use standard deviation. And I can only use standard deviation if the manipulation leg is clear to me. Now, you might be asking, Justin, what is the manipulation leg here? This is the manipulation. It's the last leg lower or higher, depending if we're in a buy model. And if, if we're in a buy model, it's the last leg lower before switching trends right? Before starting buy side of the curve. So I would draw in my standard deviation from the high or from the low to the high. And then this gives me my projected targets. And most of the time, whenever you are using standard devi deviation and can recognize whatever the manipulation move is, 2 to 2.5 will always, most of the time, line up with that buy side level. And that is going to be your target. So Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. Um, I would love to see what you guys have to say in the comments. If you disagree with me or if you you know found this helpful, I would love to see the ways in which you found this helpful. Um, the whole goal is this video is to just try to brain dump my the way that I view the market, the way that I think that everybody should view the market in the most logical way possible. So if you did enjoy this video, again, like, subscribe, um, I live trade every single morning in my Discord. Um, the link to that will be in the bio as well. We currently are doing a Christmas and New Year's sale. That sale ends this Friday. So if you've been wanting to join a really awesome ICT community, we live trade every single morning. 
talk about my thought process, and we also do charting sessions every single night as well going over those trades. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, I, I said that already three times. So <laughs> enjoy the rest of your day, guys. I will see you in the next one. Peace.